bottles start to expand. Holy cow. So check this out. We're now at 10,482 feet. My head feels kind of weird. And this water bottle I had sitting here is now compressed. So, <laughs> yeah. Talk about altitude. Up here is a locked gate. to the Magnolia Ridge Observatory and Lake Mirror Laboratory for Atmospheric Research. So I can't go past it. But I can backpack my way up there. I bet. I don't know. Here's break number one. Since I lived 500 feet above sea level in my life, never been to 10,000. Gone like maybe 100 feet upwards. And Really tired. So I'll stay here for a while until I can breathe again. And the whole place is covered in like a water mesh, if you see. And down there is the observatory. If we look to our left, we'll see this very large array. focus is some of the antennas they're moving into uh, D array right now a couple of them are on the east side on this side is an A array which is the farthest D array is the closest space they're going to be squished together in about 6 meter 600 meter square or circle um, down yonder here's a peak <laughs> there's like a Inner Mountain or Sakaro Peak, where the antennas are located. And around the middle of the two peaks, there is Sakaro itself. Come from a few miles from here. And then here's New Mexico. We're at 6,000. This one's a little high. The peak is only about. About 10,700 something feet, or 10,812 apparently. <laughs> and I do get cell service and data as well. Here's the Wi Fi analyzer app running. I see Soka PRT in Timber and a couple other ones, and I'm betting those are from the, the observatory over there. Anyway, um, let's set up the antenna, see if we can hit Albuquerque. Let's uh, take a second to explain what's uh, going on. First of all, with every uh, radio station, the antenna is the most important part. I mean, it can be debated, but anyway, this is the uh, Aero satellite antenna. It's uh, 442 meters across. It's not cross polarized or circularly polarized. It's the same beam, and so the feeds are you have one feed there and one feed here. And then it goes through 50 feet of coax, kind of a bit much, but I bet the attenuation is quite high. <laughs> But I didn't have any <coughs> more connectors, so uh, I'll do with it. And that goes to the 97 right here, and that is being powered by this Silver Star badass battery that I got from the hill. Um, I guess this is the hill of the mountain. I mean, that's the way. So let's try to make some contact with somebody on. I brought my camera, so I should be. Albuquerque's that away, so that's where I should point you. Spin through the dial. If I guarantee that. Well, no, it should be over like 8 o'clock, I think. It started at noon, Saturday, ends at 8 o'clock. Well, it always, always used to end at 9 o'clock, I'm sorry, so it's at 8 o'clock. Come 
back up here with HF. This is a beautiful place. This is actually a Soda Peak. I think it's MG or WN5 or WG5 slash MG. What is it? 001, maybe. Or 003. 002. It's got a 00 in it. So. Alright. How about we scan through this band? Well, that's weird. I discovered where the QRM is from. Check it out. From the radio. There's a little timer for the function key. For a lot of the keys, I guess. Yeah, it goes off when you hit like when you use keys. No, not what I do. Okay. Is that fixable? I found something! It's in Japanese. <laughs> oh no, it's uh, Echo Link or something. My phone just died, so if I get in trouble, ham radio it'll be. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm enjoying this. It's an IRLP node that's connecting to Japan. Well, ham hey, radios are bust. I haven't really looked honestly, but here is uh, an ATAS or a, whatever they call it, the automated weather system. Here's another A automated weather observation. This third one. And then there's another. Here's the lovely APRS frequency. I remember in, in a dream that 14200 was the frequency of interest for single sideband 2 meter or 2 meter operations. If one thing's true, I'll bet you the way down is a lot easier than the way up. Whew, so I made it finally over here. This is where I parked. There's my car. And over there is a gate. You can barely see it. Uh, I thought to take, show you guys what the car looks like at night. Like that. <laughs> if I uh, introduce my, uh, my telephoto lens, which is really just a pair of 7x50 binoculars with a 7.1 degree field of view. I can't hardly hold it still. <laughs> Maybe it'll help with it. It's on a tripod. There you go. How about that? There we are. Refocus. This is 6.1x. Add the telephoto lens. Beautiful. I think that's too much thing. That's a car. <laughs> I can't get any more detail than that, I guess. Over there, you see a little flashing light. It's the airport. This road is really nice. I mean, I'll show you the sign at the front entrance. It says, you know, four wheel drive only, lock, lock your axles, etc. Probably need to switch the first. But man, it's like, it's just a little bumpy. It, it gets a little narrow at times, but it's, you know, it's about this wide, you know, there's a lot of turnarounds with the places to to park or whatever. A lot of times, if, you know, the worst of my biggest fear going up this road was uh, if I had to, you know, if I encountered somebody, I would have to, you know, back up or he would have to back up. It would be a scary situation, whoever has to back up. Um, but I did encounter somebody in a big, big truck, like a big dually, but... It was wide enough, it was down toward the bottom, that uh, there was no, no problem getting across. So, yeah. Finally paved road. 
Uh, that's so nice.